What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we gotta check out Head in the Sand Times WWE Ignored Fans. Well, we did check out Times WWE supposedly listened to fans. So we gotta check out the plenty and plenty and plenty of times where WWE simply ignored fans aka vince mcmahon says no i'm gonna do what i want when i want because i'm vincent kennedy mcmahon and there's nothing you can do to stop me that actually hurt my voice oh my goodness but yeah man <laughs> we're gonna check this out should be a interesting one let's see the plenty of times where vince just didn't listen because it's vince we're gonna get right into this one appreciate all love support let's do this thing in more recent years, Vince McMahon has become notorious for his stubborn attitude when it comes to booking a wrestling show. Yes, while many promoters are only too happy to lean into something if their audience goes with it naturally, at times in WWE, it's been likely that such a thing will cause the person involved to get pushed down the card. But what are the biggest examples of this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. So join us as we take a deep dive into Head in the Sand, times WWE ignored their fans. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to start anywhere with of this course. topic, there really Gotta is no there. better place to do so than with probably the biggest example of Vince going against his audience's wishes during the modern day by pushing Roman Reigns to the moon throughout the latter half of the 2010s. Mm -hmm. Sure, the Tribal Chief might be the top star in all of wrestling right now, now he is. but that certainly wasn't always the case. No. <laughs> so what was the problem during his initial singles run then? Well, despite getting over his one-third of the shield between 2012 and 2014, it was clear that, by the time the latter year came around, the Florida native needed some more experience before he was ready for the big solo push. Obviously. But then that shouldn't have been an issue because if WWE needed a top guy in the meantime, they already had the people's favorite, Daniel Bryan. Yep. And if the boss was still insistent on not having the American Dragon fill this spot, there was also Reigns Shield stablemates Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for fans, though, none of these choices would be used, and in the end, Vince decided to push Roman to the moon anyway, long before he was ready for the spot. And that was why at the 2015 Royal Rumble, after Daniel Bryan was eliminated early and the live crowd realized they were now entering the era of the big dog, whether they liked it or not, they rejected the match and mass, and even booed The Rock when he came yeah. out at the end to they give his cousin the, the seal of approval. <laughs> but that wasn't even the worst of it because oh, it got worse. <laughs> things got even more combative when, after getting huge go-away heat at WrestleMania 31, WWE continued to push Reigns hard rather than step back a little, something which led to the exact same situation occurring at both WrestleMania 32 and WrestleMania 33. Yeah. But then how couldn't they be because he'd been forced down their throats so much, even if he had improved a lot by now, he'd become symbolic of everything they hated about Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. Thankfully though, there would be a happy ending yes. to this story as, since turning heel in 2020, Roman has become the best character in all of WWE. But even, even if such close. success eventually came, it still left a host of bodies in its wake, as there were so many other potential huge stars who were ultimately sacrificed in Vince McMahon's never-ending like quest Samoa to ignore Joe. his fans and get one guy over. And that was far from the only example of the boss ignoring his audience even during this time period, because in 2019, right at the height of Roman's push, Becky Lynch's rise to the top of the card was dampened somewhat by the insistence that Charlotte Flair be shoehorned into a WrestleMania main event with Ronda Rousey. Now, this will always grind my gears. It should have only been Ronda and Becky. She did not need to be in that match. She didn't make the match better. I'm just being honest. The feud was there between Ronda and Becky, bro. This isn't a shot at Charlotte Flair, of course. After all, she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. But like with Roman Reigns, it's undeniable there is a sense amongst fans that she's been given more opportunities than others. So when Becky Lynch rose to the top of the card in the second half of 2018 then, it felt like a breath of fresh air had been blown into the division. And given this was also the period where Ronda Rousey was riding high as Raw Women's Champion, for the first time ever, a women's match felt like a legitimate contender for a WrestleMania main event. Facts. After all, Lynch was by then the biggest babyface in WWE. 
and with Rousey being the biggest mainstream star, the pairing felt natural. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, despite the momentum for this building to the point that fans were desperate for it by early 2019, Vince McMahon still insisted on adding Charlotte Flair into the mix as oh, well. Brother. Yes, now rather than being a simple one-on-one -on -one encounter between the top babyface and the top heel, things were watered down in order to add the queen to it. And this wasn't a decision which went down well with many fans as it happened, because what they really wanted to see was Becky versus Ronda. That's it. But the boss didn't care about that, of course. Now, as far as he was concerned, Charlotte was still the real star of the division. And it's because of this attitude that the WrestleMania 35 main event went from being an all-time great contest to one which was still historically important, but ultimately not the one people really desired. No. But at least that was the only thing on WrestleMania 35 that went against fans' wishes, right? Well, no, mm. as it happened, because about a half an hour earlier, Kurt Angle's big retirement match had finally come against the man no one wanted him to face, Baron Corbin. Baron fucking That's right. Corbin, bro. One of the greatest in-ring competitors of all time hung up his boots on this night with a six-minute loss to the Lone Wolf. And what made it even worse was that the obvious choice for final opponent was right there, John Cena. I would have loved it if it was John Cena. That would have been so fucking good. That would have been, that would have been good. John Cena starts his career really against, you know, uh, Kurt Angle, and he ends the career of, of uh, Kurt Angle. It would have been just beautiful, bro. You know. Even Angle himself clearly recognized this because over the weeks which followed the show, it would continue to come to light that he'd been pushing for Big Match John to face him and that he'd been unsuccessful in convincing the boss this was the right move. Oh my god, you know, that's so Feeling stupid. like someone younger should get the rub from retiring the Olympic hero instead. And that's fine, but you could have went with anybody else other than Corbin. It didn't make sense for Corbin. If you're going to go with somebody younger to get that rub, fine. I am okay with that. But... Corbin? And Vince McMahon decided to go with Corbin. The only problem with this choice, though, was that Angle was so barely mobile by now, beating him really did nothing for the heel's career. It didn't. But then, even if it had, you could argue that giving the victory to eternal mid-carter Baron Corbin was a waste, as Wasted. there were so many others like Chad Gable yes. who would have been better <laughs> suited for the role. Oh, my God. Hell, given his physical condition, Kurt's retirement shouldn't really have been about getting a younger star over anyway. Yeah. Oh, it should have just been about saying goodbye to a legend. And that's yes. why, given the fact that Cena's first main roster match was against the Olympic gold medalist, this felt like the perfect ending. In fact, earlier in the same show, Big Match John had even come out in his old Doctor of Thugonomics gear. But alas, it never worked out that way, and once again, that's fans stupid. didn't get what they wanted. Not that they should have been surprised by a disappointment involving John Cena at this point, however, as for almost two decades by this point, oh, yeah. he'd been begging for something which would never come, a heel and turn. that was the elusive Cena heel turn. Yes, there are Which is crazy. They were actually going to pull the trigger on the heel turn. I believe it was like 2007, 2008. Maybe he'll mention it. They did plan on to... They were ready to pull the trigger on the heel turn, but they never did it why this one never happened with the largest of these being the massachusetts native was such a big hit with kids and sold so much merchandise that keeping him babyface was deemed to be better for those younger fans that said it's undeniable that by the time the mid 2000s came around his character had grown incredibly stale and as a result the overall quality of wwe programming was beginning to suffer so given what we now know about how much a heel turn worked out for Roman Reigns, oh, it seems it obvious the real crazy. solution would have been to let Big Match John show his dark side for a while. Even if it might have upset some children watching at home, in fact, it been there's great. a solid argument to be made that him becoming a villain would have been for the best in the long run, as it would have not only freshened up his character, but it would have freshened up the entire product as a consequence. And oh, yeah. it's not like there weren't other... Yeah, bro, he would have... John Cena going heel would change the dynamic of the landscape of WWE at that time whenever he decided to go heel because now it's going to be John doing things his way. No more Super Cena. He's going to be winning by any means necessary. He's going to cheat to win. It's going to, it, it creates a different dynamic. Now certain people that were maybe heels or whatnot around that John Cena time, maybe they turn babyface in spite of John, you know?
Other people who couldn't have filled his shoes in kids' hearts over the years, too, because in 2008, Jeff Hardy was outselling him at the merch stands, and in 2011, CM Punk was the most white-hot figure in the entire industry. Mm -hmm. In the end, though, Vince chose to keep ignoring the largely negative responses Big Match John got every time he came down to the ring and continue to portray him as the all-conquering hero anyway. Sure, it might have contributed towards a lot of fans choosing to stop watching altogether and WWE's yeah. mainstream popularity falling Probably to levels that, that hadn't match. reached since the mid-90s, but as long as he was happy, it didn't really matter if anyone else was. Yep. Now, ultimately in New York, it always has been and always will be about what the boss wants. And if you want another prime example of him being completely out of touch with his fans' desires in the 2010s, you only have to look at the way he treated a certain Bulgarian brute during the happiest day of the year, Rusev Day. Of course, this one was particularly egregious, as when Rusev first debuted on the main roster in 2014, it felt like the boss was all in on his retro foreign heel gimmick. That said, somewhere along the way, Vince seemed to sour on his newest toy, and so as the years went on, Rusev fell more and more into a mid-card utility role. That was until 2017, however, as it was then that he completely reinvented himself with a babyface turn and the birth of Rusev Day, mm -hmm. a massively over catchphrase which was usually chanted by his heralded Aiden English prior to him coming down to the ring. But as you can probably guess by now, even if live audiences were wildly into the new gimmick, Vince McMahon was not. Of course. He actually seemed to be angry at the fact that the Bulgarian had gotten himself over of his own accord. So much so that when Rusev told the boss he needed to do something with him as Rusev Day was making the company a ton of merchandise, Vince actually responded by saying the fans weren't chanting his catchphrase because they liked him. No, they were chanting it to make fun of him. Now, there are two possible... Mm, uh, mm. someone out of touch, bro. That's all I can say here either the boss really believed what he was saying and is more touch. out of touch with reality than any of us realize or he just didn't want to go with the former united states champion even if fans were demanding it either way the result was the same rusev day would be squandered to the point that come 2020 the bulgarian brute was gone from the company altogether with him Stupid. having to jump over to all elite wrestling from there in a move which hasn't necessarily brought him much more success in the long run yeah and he's not the only one who eventually had to leave wwe behind following a botched opportunity to be pushed as almost a decade prior the Zack exact Ryder. same thing happened when Zack ryder got over big time and then was subsequently buried for his efforts yep Yes, this one has gone down in infamy so much over the years that it's the first thing most people think of when they think of Long Island Iced Z. But that's only because it was such a wasted opportunity, as in 2011, Ryder was so over, he even got his name chanted during segments where The Rock was cutting promos. Yeah, he was mega Hell, over. Hell, the Great bro. One was forced to acknowledge this in one particularly memorable segment, with him personally putting the New York native over then. Bro, that said, he such got over on YouTube. I watched that. I remember watching him get over on YouTube, he got over, and then from there, they they butchered him. It's like they punished him for getting over. That's so stupid. An act may have sealed the fate of the up-and-comer unintentionally, because if there's one thing we know about Vince McMahon, it's that he doesn't like things happening out with his control. Which is stupid. So when a wrestler pegged for the undercard gets organically popular with fans, it goes against his plans, and because of that, he feels the need to squash it before it can gain a further foothold. And that's exactly what he did with Zack Ryder. As in the worst case of burying someone in recent memory, the internet champion spent 2012 not being pushed higher up the card, but instead being booked to lose his on-screen girlfriend to John Cena, Cena yeah. suffer a kayfabe leg injury, <laughs> then get his wheelchair rolled off the entrance ramp by Kane. Needless to say, after that, fan support for Zack began to wane as it became clear WWE was never going to do anything with him, which didn't involve treating him like a jobber. They so bad did like it get joke. after a while, in fact, that for the rest of his run there, Ryder would pretty much go forgotten, only rarely appearing on TV and, whenever he did, hardly he ever getting a win. How different it could have been, though, if the boss had put his ego aside and just decided to go with something his fans wanted for a change. We are not suggesting Long Island Ice Z would have been the next Steve Austin or anything, no. but during a period where the company were desperate for new top stars, he might have given them a boost in that department. Of course, he wasn't the only one who could have reached this level at this time, however, only to have any hopes of a push be squashed by Vince McMahon. 
And we can say that for certain because in 2013, despite giving us one of the greatest money in the bank cash of all time, Dolph even Ziggler quickly found debatable. himself returning back to the mid card from whence he came. How did this happen, though? After all, the show off seemed to have it all on the face of things. Yeah. Good looks, charisma, promo ability, and the in ring skills of Kurt Henning. And those were all aspects of his character which fans noticed too, as come the beginning of the 2010s, he was really starting to get over as part of a three-person act with AJ Lee and Big E. Mm -hmm. So when he won the Money in the Bank contract in 2012 and subsequently cashed this in on the Raw after WrestleMania so good. 29, Legendary later moment. to win the World Heavyweight title to a monster ovation, it was assumed that his time had finally come and that he would now be reaching the main event scene. Unfortunately, though, any hopes of such an eventuality were squashed soon after. Why was this? Well, after picking up a concussion, Dolph yeah. was apparently deemed too injury prone to yeah. be a top guy. And so once he was cleared to return to action, he'd immediately drop That's his title so to Alberto Del Rio. Up, and from there, never really sniffed That's the main. That's some BS, bro. Well, you got, you're prone to get injured. I'm like, what? That's some BS. So BS, bro. They, oh, it's fucking event scene again. Perhaps unsurprisingly, then, this didn't go down well with fans, and so seeing the injury prone excuse is just that an excuse, yeah. they continued to rally behind the show off up until the point it became clear such efforts were in vain, that was. Yeah. That's right. Like with Zack Ryder before, audiences eventually realized they were wasting their energy cheering for Dolph Ziggler. Mm -hmm. And that was why, after a while, they just stopped reacting to him altogether, with mm -hmm. this ultimately leading to the situation we have today, where he's one of a long line of incredibly talented wrestlers in WWE who never fully got their due because they didn't meet the narrow opinions of what Vince McMahon felt a star should be on that particular day. But it's not always a single person who feels the effect of such a barrier Sad, from bro. the boss. No, sometimes it's an entire brand instead. ECW. And if you want a perfect example of this, you yeah. only have to look to what became of WWE CW in the mid 2000s. Yep, he yes, that up this too. one did admittedly start out great, as not only was One Night Stand 2005 one of the greatest WWE produced pay per views of all time, but the following year's edition gave us the all time legendary match between John Cena and Rob Van Dam, where the crowd actually threatened to riot should the boy not come out the winner. <laughs> That said, the real reason these two shows were as successful as they were was because Paul Heyman, the original owner of ECW, was largely the man in charge, and he understood what the fan base wanted. Once Vince McMahon got his hands on things, however, the whole dynamic changed, as with him never truly understanding the appeal of the Renegade promotion, he instead decided to morph things into WWE Lite, as he yeah, basically that's all turned was. ECW into a developmental show for the main roster. Yeah. And this meant rather than the outsider spirit of the brand being kept alive by pushing people like CM Punk to the moon, the Sci-Fi Network exclusive show instead I saw the lights was of on the, the big show be forced to the top. But that wasn't all, because aside from going with traditional WWE-style guys as main eventers, the mid-card was also turned into a joke, when as a result of the show's new home, cheesy sci-fi gimmicks like the ECW zombie would be put on air for all to see. So it shouldn't come as a shock then that fans began to grow wary of this one pretty quickly. And this growing dissatisfaction all reached ahead at the brand's last pay-per-view offering, December to December, in the winter of 2006. As there, after a main event which featured the likes of Hardcore Holly being pushed strong, and Bobby Lashley coming out the overall winner and new ECW champion, the once faithful extreme audience finally decided they'd had enough. <laughs> but they weren't the only ones who'd had enough because seeing the entire thing turning into just another Vince McMahon vanity project, Paul Heyman got into an argument with the boss backstage about the creative direction of the show, with this argument leading to him being fired and not returning again until 2012. Of course, by that point, he was back just in time to see another moment which fans had been desperate to see for years not take place, as it was in 2014 that Sting finally mm. signed with WWE and was subsequently booked to not go up against The Sting Undertaker at Undertaker, WrestleMania. Man. Sure, it might have, have been, been a magical. dream match since the days of the Attitude Era, what with it pitting the stalwart of WCW and the Eternal of WWE against each other, Just two gothic figures who seemed perfectly uh, made for one perfect. another. Could have been but instead of going with this and giving the dead man possibly that last great bout he could retire on a few years earlier, Vince McMahon decided it wasn't a good idea because this video his is mind, actually both men were far man. too old for it to meet Straight up with expectations. 
Now, you could easily argue the foolishness of this attitude as there were plenty of bells and whistles which could have been added to the mix, and whistles which eventually got included anyway when the Stinger faced off against Triple H instead. And given no one was expecting a five-star classic from this one, just a spectacle for the ages, it makes us more inclined to believe the boss simply didn't want to present an outsider as being on the same level of one of his top guys. Just stupid. After all, what else are we supposed to think when the end result of the former WCW champion's showdown with the game was for him to lose in limp fashion? All while commentary portrayed the entire feud as the final chapter in the WWE versus WCW rivalry. Fucking stupid. Yes, rather than actually do the obvious here, the whole thing was overthought to the point that by the time it was done, Sting was little more than an afterthought, and instead the headline was that Vince McMahon had once again triumphed over Ted Turner. Had it been different, then who knows where we could be today? Maybe Steve Borden would still be in New York today and not finishing out his career with AEW instead. Yeah. But to be fair to Vince, it's not like every WCW name would get buried while in WWE, because in 2020, a star from the past was made to look strong at the expense of the current patch, when much to the chagrin of fans watching... What's so infuriating about that particular situation is when they got Goldberg originally, they didn't do that. When they got Goldberg originally... And you had Triple H running the show on Monday Night Raw. Instead of putting the title on Goldberg, which you should have done, originally, you didn't do it. And when you did it, it had lost all the steam. It wasn't the same. That Elimination Chamber Goldberg was in, he should have won that. But you wait years later for some new, fresh talent to lose to a guy that they shouldn't be losing to. All right, bro. Goldberg beat the Fiends to win the Universal Championship. That's right, we've said it before and we'll say it again. Nothing good happens when WWE goes to Saudi Arabia. And in this instance, that statement rings particularly true because after an autumn of shaky booking, Bray Wyatt's latest horror movie monster creation was finally starting to stabilize as a main event level heel. It's just a shame then that rather than have him hold on to this title heading into WrestleMania 36 where he could have a high level match against Roman Reigns, McMahon chose to change direction at the last minute, when at February 27th Super Showdown, he chopped him out to Goldberg in just three minutes. And this proved to be the final straw for many watching because while there had been a certain level of nostalgia associated with having the former WCW star back on the roster up until then, the idea that he was getting over at the expense of others who could potentially be big players if they were allowed to be led many fans to finally turn on him. Not that the boss cared though because no, as far as he care. was concerned, the stars of the 90s were the only ones who could really draw anymore, something which will eventually become a self-fulfilling prophecy if you push those people above your modern crop for long enough. Yep. And sure, it could be argued that The Fiend did ultimately get to do something notable at WrestleMania when he had the very memorable Firefly Funhouse match against John Cena. And so perhaps it's no surprise a figure that could have been the top heel of his era ended up being released from his contract just a year later. Since this point, though, he has returned to WWE, and while his current run hasn't exactly been a blow-away success, at least he's no longer losing to past their prime legends of yesteryear. So we'll just have to hope this continues as time goes on then, because with Triple H still having at least some control over the creative process as of the time of this video's recording, he seems far more likely to listen to fans and not ignore them, even when they're screaming at the top of their lungs. Yeah, man, this video actually infuriated me again. Just going back down memory lane and watching some of Vince's biggest blunders because he's out of fucking touch. And I have a feeling we may get that again with LA Knight, bro. I'm sorry. I know some of y'all like, be patient. It makes no difference in pushing a motherfucker after SummerSlam. That's the rumors. We're going to push LA Knight after SummerSlam. Why not push him before SummerSlam? Why not push him now? Why not give him a SummerSlam legendary moment? We know it's going to be sold out. You know that crowd's going to go crazy. Give him that moment. I know reports saying he's going to be there, but, you know, it may not be like a actual match setup or something like that. Like, maybe he'll be there, do something. The crowd will, have, you know, obviously turn up for that, but it's not the same. 
give him a moment. Him winning the United States Championship at SummerSlam this year would be, that would have been fantastic. We're going to wait till after SummerSlam, and then we're going to push him. I don't trust him. Especially with Vince being back, I don't. I don't fucking trust it. I don't. Comment down below, let me know some other times where Vince McMahon's booking just just pissed you off. Just the it's like it was so obvious to do something and they just didn't do it. Just to spite us. Let let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Mo250K. I'm still the unspeedy YouTube Wrestling Champion World. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one.